treat to have our new commander from Goodfellow Air Force Base come and visit today, uh, Colonel Kimberly Jose. Just has come from the Pacific. I have. Wow, that's a big difference, isn't it? It is. And you were hand chosen to lead our, be commander of our base. And you've only been here in command five, six, just a few weeks. Just a few weeks. And you've been here though long enough to know our city loves having good fellow Air Force Base men and women, oh, haven't you? Absolutely. It, it has uh, been in my seven, almost seven years, um, a blessing to me to realize this city loves America and loves our base. It's very rewarding. And I love having a joint base. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Have you had a, been a part of a joint base before? As a matter of fact, my last assignment in uh, northern Japan was a joint base. We had a lot of Navy on the base, a few Army. Uh, as well, but it was it was very similar. So very Isn't it vibrant. Rich? It I, that, really okay, is. you say vibrant, and I say rich, and and both of those words really are uh, um, exactly how I feel. It adds a, such a richness to our city to see all of our branches that serve our country, and my travels over the last few years to different bases that have been, had a portion perhaps of joint. Uh, people are excited about it. And so I'm ex we're blessed to have you in our city for about two years. About two years. And you, I wanna go back because there are many young people in our city who dream of perhaps going a route similar to the route you have chosen. So can we talk, give them in a executive summary, your past, where did you grow up and then your path to get to where you are today? Of course. Um, the first thing I would say about that path is it was not thought out. <laughs> That's um, helpful to parents. <laughs> it, it is. Um, and it also would not necessarily provide a one-size-fits-all template for anyone. In other words, there are many paths. Um, if you interviewed another 10 Air Force colonels, you would find another 10 stories on how they got to this point. The, the path I chose was uh, did have some common themes, though. I am a lifelong learner, and my parents were very focused on the fact that I would stay in school and do as well at school as anything else I did. So while I was encouraged to pursue other pursuits, sports, hobbies, I w never questioned what my primary job was uh, growing up, which was to focus on school. And I did. And I did love to learn, so that made it easy. Um, so my mom read to me when I was very, very small, and I think um, in that she instilled a, just a lifelong love of learning, and I continue with that today. Uh, I, I went to um, a small uh, parochial high school, actually, in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And then from there, my family didn't have a lot of money, so we didn't necessarily have a financial plan for college. Uh, so it was also incumbent upon me to figure out how I was going to get college paid for. And I was lucky enough to get a scholarship. I uh, got a Missouri Governor Scholarship to Southeast Missouri State University. But when I got there, I got into freshman orientation and I heard about this thing called ROTC and I didn't know what that was. So it was Air Force ROTC and I found out that they also would give me a scholarship based on some test scores that I had to pay for school twice, which was mm. kind of neat. I almost got a little bit of an extra paycheck at the end of every semester to go to school, which was nice because I didn't have to work as much outside of class. So four years, uh, I got my degree in psychology. And I would not necessarily get psychology or make psychology my degree again if I had it to do over. But I think the most important thing was to complete the program mm. and to get the degree. Uh, I owed the Air Force four years for my scholarship. And that's what I was going, going to do is spend four years in the Air Force and then go do something else. And 11 assignments and 21 years later, here I, here I am. So it's, it's been an incredible journey. Uh, I've gotten to see the world, but the best part has been 
the people. Um, the people inspire you um, and they keep you coming back for more. You're never quite sure what's around the next corner, what the next assignment will bring, and so that's been the best part for me. So the lessons, um, and very hopeful lessons I hear for young people who several of ours, for example, that wanted from our high schools last year to get accepted into the academy, got their letters from our congressman, but several of them have opted because they didn't get accepted to go through ROTC at some very good uh, colleges and universities. This is a great and very successful route. Absolutely. And so I'm pleased to, that I wanted to hear you uh, t tell about your story because there isn't just one way. Absolutely not. And even those graduates, those high school graduates who decide that maybe they're not quite ready for college or they don't have a way to pay for it. You know, enlisting in the Air Force, we have some amazing airmen out at the base right now that prove me right every day in this theory. You know, they, they can go do a job for the Air Force, they'll enlist for maybe four or six years, uh, serve honorably, learn some amazing skills, and then qualify for the GI Bill. But they also get tuition assistance right now while they're in the Air Force, so they will get a lot of hours towards their degree as enlisted members and then can get the degree and perhaps even choose to come back in as an officer that way. And several that I've met over the years who've taken that route model incredible perseverance and make great officers after having walked in the shoes of an enlisted man. I think uh, that gives them a, a, a a little bit of background of information that maybe someone who hadn't been enlisted uh, would understand fully. It, it really does. That perspective is something that, for instance, I don't have, and I can see how valuable that would be. Um, and I'll tell you a secret. The other thing, I am not a self-starter. I need an external source of motivation, someone counting on me to to be there someone to provide me some structure everybody works a little differently yes and what I learned in the military was that little bit of external discipline and structure was a wonderful motivator as a young person when I was I was pretty good student but I didn't have a lot of, of good study habits good discipline and that extra little bit of structure has really focused me I have three master's degrees now, uh, and by the time I got to the master's level, I would not have been able to rely on just my my charm and good looks and, and, <laughs> and, and lack of study habits. I had to have some structure, and it has provided me with a wonderful set of tools over the years, and I think it does that for anyone, no matter what they choose to do, enlisted officer, uh, it's, a, it's a great way to get some extra discipline and focus as well. Well, I appreciate you uh, owning up to that <laughs> because I think sometimes our young people see those of us who are already in a position of leadership and think, I could never do it. And I, I uh, love hearing real uh, stories. <laughs> your, what do you consider your expertise. We're an intelligence and a firefighting base and so is that has that the intelligence area been somewhat your path? It, it absolutely has. I was here 21 years ago as a student at Goodfellow Air Force Base in the officer intelligence training course. Uh, back then it was about eight months long and intelligence in the Air Force back then was actually six different what we call Air Force specialty codes since then they've all been merged into one. So it's, it's a very diverse field. You can do a completely different job every time you move to a new base. And that's been my experience. But back when I first was trained, it was more specialized. And so um, it has been, every job I've had has been in an intelligence uh, specialty or career field, but it's been very different in terms of the levels I've worked at, whether it be at a local base supporting flying ops, or I could be up at a headquarters. Uh, as a first lieutenant, I even briefed the Secretary of Defense. 
um, when I worked at the Pentagon. So it's just, it's really just been all over the map. Well, and at the same time, the field itself has undergone an absolute transformation. Incredible it, transformation. It's almost like um, this edu well, almost like in the field of education. When I started, it was a chalkboard and an overhead projector. And now think how, uh, and kids just memorize. We weren't teaching thinkers and how necessarily to problem solve, except a math problem. Not global issues and learning. There's not just one right and wrong answer. That's the biggest way I think education, besides the toys, and in your field there's certainly expensive toys, <laughs> but it's the what we're doing and um, education is not the same. A person that stays out now and comes back, if they've stayed out eight or nine or ten years while they're having children like I did it early in my career, when I walked back in the classroom ten years later, it was identical. Kids were in rows. I was in charge of the chalk. <laughs> and I shared it occasionally with a child. <laughs> and now it is uh, it's so exciting, a little fearful because of how we're conducting learning, teaching and learning in the classroom. And now yours is a student-based yes. command. And was it a student-based command in uh, the Pacific in Japan? It was not. It was um, uh, an operational unit. Yes. Uh, and that's so Japan. different, isn't it? It really is. Um, although we had the, the large preponderance of our personnel were recent graduates of Goodfellow Air Force Base. So I got the product that I have now, I now, I now produce. I know I don't produce it. I have some great people on the base. Yes, that produce you it. do. I just get to sit back and watch the awesomeness. But we, it, you're, you're so right about the transformation that's taken place. And it's societal, really. And it's not even societal, it's globally. We're so interlinked, and the speed of information now is so fast. Uh, and it's affected education, it's affected what I do in my business. And one of the things that I wish, as I look back on my education, uh, that I think is so critical, and we see it at the base too, is the reliance that we all have as, as a nation, as a military, on the sciences. Uh, you know, we call it STEM, science, mm -hmm. technology, engineering, and math. And I wish I would have stayed focused on math and science a bit more than I did when I was in high school. I think I was good at it, but again, because I didn't have those good habits, um, I started to struggle because I didn't have the habits to fall back on. But even as I go back and do those kinds of things again today, I'm reminded how much I love it and I wish I would have stuck with it and maybe pursued a degree in that. Well, I think you need to um, look forward instead of backwards <laughs> and realize that you're at the stage of being a, a colonel, you're, and you're a leader and a commander, your people skills perhaps, uh, I could be so bold to say, are critical maybe more than your body of science um, you're, you're in command, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't get to do the job anymore, so. Okay, our partnership with Goodfellow is incredibly important to both of us. You uh, are new here and maybe don't realize that we have usually every year right at 663. Uh, military children of airmen, soldiers, Marines, uh, sailors from Goodfellow Air Force Base in our schools. Now, some people may say, well, you've got 15,000 children, this is a small percentage. But in this city, we are so proud to have them, and we, ta we are very aware that those children are also in transition. None of them, hardly any of them, unless they are uh, trainers, uh, their parents are, will be here for several years, and that, but that's a small percent. The majority of these children are here for less than a year to two years, and 
they've moved a lot. I moved a lot as a child, and uh, even though I'm not a young woman anymore, I remember vividly how that the grit it took to walk in the door as a new student when my particularly when my dad was deployed uh, you're under extra strain and uh, this is all but four years of my professional career there's been a base located by or in my school district and so lessons learned is that we can't be vigilant enough to individual children at all ages in what they're going through. Even if they're parented and deployed today, they know the likelihood is they're going to be. And I think I've told you recently, in, uh, my hope had been that we would in our nation, drawing down from the Middle East, that we would deploy less. <laughs> and my, uh, I've been told um, by folks that know that that's probably not going to be the case. So I got to quit dreaming <laughs> that, and just uh, my our staff from every employee, from our cafeteria workers that see the all of our children, including those whose parents work for you, and our other children uh, who don't have uh, parents in the military, all our children for us to be sensitive to when is a child hurting. And it seems to me over the last couple of years because of families being repeatedly deployed, whether it's the Air Force, I think does a great job just doing it six months, by and often it's six months where all the way to other uh, branches of the service having longer deployments. But looking for ways for our district to lessons that you learn other places. It may be something small, but that we can incorporate into our toolkit of being sensitive to what you're, because you're, you're, those children, if they're doing emotionally, physically, psychologically healthy, then their parents are going to perform better for you. <laughs> I mean, we both have this vested interest. And so um, our city wants to, to learn from you with anything that you have learned. My school district leaders want to learn. And uh, so I hope, Colonel, that over you will not be shy uh, to share little bitty things that you may think, oh, this is so inconsequential, and yet added to what we're doing may just add a spark that helps just maybe a handful of children. Absolutely, and kids are so resilient, but um, when you take away that structure that they rely yeah. on, uh, so again, you said it with the moves, and then if mom or dad deploys, um, pieces of that structure start to go uh, to go away, and um, sometimes the children, uh, especially, have a hard time articulating if they're hurting uh, or they're struggling. And so that watchful eye you talked about, I think, is so important. And I know we have a lot of programs on the base with the, in the child development center, school age programs, after school programs, uh, and we are sensitive to that. Uh, people much smarter than me who are experts in education like yourself I know have been focused on that piece of resiliency for our children for a very long time uh, and we've made some strides but it is it's something we can never take our eyes off and never keep trying to to learn ways to do more better exactly. um, you know we have you have those programs but we are with 
your children eight hours a day and eight of their best hours from the time they get up in the morning until mid to late afternoon and then if they're older and, and involved in extracurricular we may have them uh, long long hours yes. and so our commitment is not only are you and I and our expanded staffs and community leaders looking for ways to help your uh, young men and women students on your base everything from trolleys providing them access to uh, just R&R &R in our city on the weekends to these precious children who many of them will grow up and be a part of the military themselves and we want them to be and so uh, I welcome your input and we will this partnership has done nothing but be a blessing to me and my staff uh, your your the, your predecessors have you're going to be standing on their shoulders in this city of the great partnerships uh, this city is hungry to support you in your mission. And it is so obvious to me in just my few weeks here, the focus on Goodfellow and the people of Goodfellow, all the way down, uh, including the families, the children, um, how much the city just opens up all of the amazing things that are available here. Um, San Angelo is a very vibrant city. Mm -hmm. People don't realize uh, the, the culture, the arts, the education opportunities here. They're, it's wonderful. And, and all of those have been made accessible to the men and women of, of Goodfellow Air Force Base and our families. And I don't think anyone could offer up a better example of a community-based relationship anywhere in the Air Force, anywhere in the world. It, again, I've moved 11 times in my 21 years, and I can say without, without equal that this is the best relationship I've ever seen. Well, we can always, those of us who are slightly competitive, and just in the hours I've known you, I sense there's a little bit of that in you, <laughs> and I enjoy that uh, immensely. We want to get better. Uh, ch even champions are always looking for ways to get better, and in a changing environment, shame on us if we're not looking at uh, the bases where you that cross your path, the bases that I have been privileged to visit in my role, um, and see is there one something we can do so that your instructor, your students are able to focus better on their job and not worry about their children and their families. If I could add one more thing, um, our, anyone who reads or listens to the media knows that you all are being hit um, below the quick on sequestration. It is what it is, and we, I don't want to sit around, I will, I personally will not sit around and whine about that. It is our hand of cards. So, one thing I hope our community will become aware of is there may be ways that we can help your civilian population cope with having a fourth of their salary approximately now. The waters were ruffled a little bit over the last two months and they lost 11 days or so of pay over a two or two and a half month period. But now we've just heard we've got a, it's, it's here. So just to give some folks an idea if there's any business owners who have would be willing to offer a day a week or a day a month of employment for some of the hardest working, yes. most patriotic, they have good, uh, they follow rules, they're <laughs> honest, <laughs> they're good employees yes. 
and we're uh, going to be visiting with you and your staff about some things we've brainstormed in my staff of ways since we're the second or third biggest employer in our count in our city ways we can absorb some because not many people can lose a fourth of their pay mm -hmm. and so some will get other jobs second because these are hard workers or they will have to find different and leave you and they are a wealth they are the stability Absolutely. of your base they're there when you leave <laughs> and uh, so I just wanna we're gonna uh, talk about different things like bus driving uh, substitute teaching but if that'll just start wheels moving in our community that see us visiting and we're gonna do some newspaper articles just to help us get through this another transition and we're going forward we're not uh, whining right. we're just going forward but trying to take care of our people and dr bonds th th thank you that is just another example to me of how the people of san angelo again don't just say how can we help and they mean we it. appreciate you you back that up with such actionable creative uh, solutions uh, and, and it just uh, it touches me every time I hear of another example just like this so thank and, you and you're welcome it's our pleasure and these are our people some people who've lived here their whole lives and have loved good fellow in our in America and our military don't realize that I have peers in other states that are picketing bases that want a base to leave their community that's still around in our world and it's not the norm but it is there and so I want us now that you all are facing this our city to realize ways that we might could pick up uh, and be your partner in this in these tough times I also hope just gonna be campaigning that maybe we can get some additional of these new cyber missions come to our city so if you think of ways we can help that campaign we are, we're there for you ma'am. We are definitely engaged <laughs> in that conversation and we're hopeful as well um, that we'll realize some of the the training uh, requirements for the cyber plus up. Which is relatively new mm -hmm. and uh, we hear they're gonna where they're cutting in some areas this is so vibrant and necessary for our survival. Absolutely. For our defense of our home turf as well as foreign land. So there are lots of other ways we can work together. Yes. Thank you so much and welcome to one of the neatest cities in our country, world. <laughs> in the world, I agree and I can say that. I've just been around it, I feel like. Yep. San Angelo's amazing. Uh, everyone has reached out and been so kind and uh, welcoming to me and you continue to be uh, incredible partners to Goodfellow Air Force Base. And I could not be happier to be here uh, and be in command of all these amazing people on this wonderful mission. Uh, and I look forward to the next two years. We do too. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you.